Hello my lovely friends! Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I ended up reading in February. I read quite a lot of books in February. <laughs> I believe I read 25 if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> the number may be off and I have DNF some books so around the 25 range let's just say that. And I did talk about I think 18 in my mid-month wrap-up so I'm going to link that down below for you to watch and uh, those were all the books that I read I read from February 1st to February 13th. Now I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I've read since February 13th to the end of the month. <laughs> I read 13 books in that time frame and a lot of things happened and so um uh, let's get into the video. If you watched my 24 hour reading vlog that I posted a couple weeks ago, I ended up reading four books for that video. I'm not going to go in depth. I'm not going to really talk about them all that much. Go check out that reading vlog if you want to know more about them. I ended up reading Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, which is a age gap where the woman is older and kind of like single parent because the hero in here has guardianship over his niece. Give it five stars. Go check out more of my thoughts in that vlog. Same with um, The Phantom of the Opera. Um, <laughs> Graphic novel, my lovely friend Samantha over at Bucks with Samantha gifted me. So I decided to read this on Valentine's Day. Super duper fun. Loved it. Gave it four stars. I also read Big Bet by Cassie Mint, which is one of the books in her Big Boy series. I gave this five stars because it was so good. It's a friends to lovers novella, I think taking place all in Vegas and it was amazing. I also read one more book for that video. It was a novella. Um, I will not be promoting or talking about this author anymore in my videos because I do not support what she did whatsoever recently. And so um, don't support her anymore and we'll be removing her books from my Goodreads shelves from now on. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> um, we can talk about this behemoth of a book and the rest of the books that I read this month. So yes, I read this on release day. This was released on February 15th. And if you know me personally, you know that I normally binge her books in one day or two days. Um, it was on the road to two days just because when I started this book, it was my first physical therapy appointment and um, in a while I was getting back into physical therapy. And so that took a large chunk out of my day, getting uh, used to my doctor and talking to them, communicating with them, learning some new exercises and all that jazz. I had a busy day when this book was released. I was very fatigued. And so um, I got to, I think like part two. And then I was like, okay, gotta go to bed. My body cannot handle me staying up all night reading this book anymore. And then February 16th, I had another episode. My chronic illness and gluten for YouTube channel is always linked down below like towards the bottom of my description. So the channel is always there for you to click on. Um, I'm going to link down below like my whole story time for the episode that I had in January. It was really bizarre because that whole episode literally happened to the day a month later, almost to the hour. I had an episode on January 16th at six o'clock in the morning. And then on February 16th, I had one at 4 a.m. So I'm like, dreading March 16th <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why it happened on the same exact day. Anyway, we're not here to talk about me and my chronic illnesses and my crazy life. So this book was a roller coaster for me to read because of my episode that I had. I don't read well when I am feeling a flare up or an episode. I don't read at all. My brain cannot handle it. I get brain fog and kind of like amnesia um, when I'm in that state and many days before and after that state. And I was also very um, nauseous, very nauseous for a good solid week after this. And so reading anything, no. I finally finished this book on February 21st, which is crazy to me because I have binged her books always in one or two days, which is not like a bad thing. It's just, it made me feel horrible about myself and blah, 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 whatever. This book, however, was a masterpiece. Gave it five stars. I don't remember a lot of this book, honestly, because of, you know? Um, so I do remember loving it. I don't remember a lot and it sucks. It sucks because I want to remember things and I want to love this even more than I do. I gave it five stars because the high of the ending was insane, insane. <laughs> and it has sparked me to hopefully read all of SJM's books all over again because I've read all of them besides Catwoman. I don't know if I'll ever read her Catwoman, Catwoman book. I might read it just to say I've read all of her books, but we'll see. I gave it five stars. I loved it. <laughs> um, and that's all really my thoughts on here. And 
I don't have a review on Goodreads either because again, reading and writing is very hard for me in the middle of a episode or after an episode. So anyway, we're going to move on from this book and me talking about my episode because I've said episode way too many times. <laughs> so after that whole occurrence, I had a really hard time finding books to read because my brain would not focus enough to read a book. So I did DNF quite a few, but I would DNF them at like page five or page six or whatever, chapter one. Um, whereas like I got pretty deep into Mountain Man Fixated by Olivia T. Turner and I DNF'd it. And I'm gonna talk about this one because I got pretty deep into it. It just got so ridiculous. So basically this woman is on a like, kind of like Girl Scout camping trip with her niece and she's trying to like be like the cool aunt, whatever. She ends up getting lost in the canoe or the kayak. I don't remember which which boat it's called. She ends up getting lost and then goes over a waterfall and this mountain man ends up saving her. The moment that he sets eyes on her, he's like, I'm in love with her. She's mine. I'm in love with her. And that just doesn't vibe with me. <laughs> I get being attracted to someone immediately when you see them, but being in love with them without them even saying a word, unless they're like faded mates or something, that just does not vibe well with me. You know, his internal monologue was just not it. Not it. I couldn't get past it. I think I was like on 30, 40 percent. I'm done. So this was a DNF for me. I then read a five star book. We have Bad Guy by Ruby Dixon. I love this one. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm a total simp for Ruby Dixon. She is a goddess to me. I love her. She's probably my favorite author or one of my favorite authors. I just love her. <laughs> and her writing is just very easy to read and really enjoyable and it just sucks you in and I love it. Bad Guy is a gladiator romance. <laughs> so this is the romance between Cruelden and Mina. Mina is a human slave and so trigger warning. There is a trigger warning here for slavery and talk of slavery. So if you are triggered by that, please be aware. So our heroine Mina here, she's a human slave and she takes care of kind of like some of the cells in this uh space station that train gladiators so one day she's tasked to clean out the cell and it has a gladiator in it and it's cruel him. and he is known for being cruel and known for being a gladiator that will literally tear the throats out of his enemies it's really funny because they have this big mean gruff growly dude who's very upset he does not know what's going on he has like amnesia from these guys doing procedures on him and so he's just like in a rage tearing the sink out of the wall ripping up blankets in his room and so she's been tasked to clean up his cell. She has to like press a button and he has these like, uh, like, like cuffs on his legs and his arms. And so they're magnetized so they'll, he'll stick to the wall. She comes in, presses the button, he sticks to the wall so that she can clean up without getting hurt. And the whole time this tiny human woman is glaring at this alien man who <laughs> ripped a sink out of the wall. She has to clean all, all she has to clean up all of his mess. And she's like, don't make a mess again. Like, I don't wanna clean this up anymore. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, I'm this mean, scary dude and you're a tiny little woman looking at me like that. <laughs> and so then he purposefully kind of like makes messes to make her come to him so he can see her. I love this. I love this one so much. Um, the audiobook is fantastic. I loved it. Um, there's way more going on. That's literally maybe just like the first two chapters and then it gets into more stuff. I'm not going to spoil it or talk about anything else, but it was so good. I loved it so much. Five stars for me. I then found a new historical romance author that I will definitely be binging and reading more of. I read two of her books in February and it is Scarlett Scott. And so I started her League of Dukes series, which I think is actually a spinoff of another series by her. So I have to look into it because I feel like there's like previous characters mentioned that I should probably know about. Um, I think this is a spinoff to another one of her series, but um, this is book number one in the League of Duke series, Nobody's Duke. If you love Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas, this book is for you. <laughs> so this is the romance between Ara and Clay. And years ago when they were, I believe in their late teens or early twenties, they ended up falling in love, but they were from rivaling families. By some means you read throughout the book why this happened. Um, they end up feeling betrayed by the other person and they haven't spoken to each other in nine years. They haven't seen or spoken to each other in nine years and they think that the other person shattered their heart. So Ara doesn't ever want to see Clay again because she thinks that um, he left her and ditched her, ghosted her essentially on the day they're supposed to run away and get married. Clay believes that 
Ara is the reason why he got ambushed by some men and beaten and has this horrible scar on his face because he thinks that she told them about their plan to run away together. And so they have these preconceived notions about how their relationship ended and um, they both despise each other. So it's nine years later and Ara has this young son and she has been married, but at the beginning of this book, she is a widow. Her husband unfortunately gets killed by some evil men. Clay is working with his brother, I think with the secret home office or something like that in British society to track down these men and to protect the people that they are out to get. And so Clay has been tasked to be Ara's bodyguard, okay? And they have to spend a lot of time together now and they do not like each other at all and they banter and bicker and fight but there's still the freaking tension that they had and angst and energy they had when they were first together and it is very hot and so they're kind of like hate doing it at the beginning kind of um and that's always fun that's always fun to read about <laughs> and anyway they they finally maybe talk about their issues and realize that there might have been something else going on um, when they were younger to drive them apart. And I really loved this. I gave this four stars. I think like it just dragged on a little bit too for me, for my taste. And I wish they just got together sooner, <laughs> but that's just my personal preference. And so yeah, I really like this one. And I love this author. If you want a hot historical romance author, this author is it. She's it. I will definitely be picking up more of her books. I did decide to read book two, which is Heartless Duke. Um, I won't go too much into this because our heroine in here was kind of like the villain in book one. And it's her romance with the brother of book one. Since she committed a crime, he has kind of like taken her and kidnapped her and tried to get information out of her. And so she's like locked up in his house and no one knows that she's there. There's a forced proximity where he's like her captor and he's trying to get information out of her. And again, hate doing it. <laughs> which is always really fun. <laughs> what I normally do in wrap ups uh, this year is I've been listing the tropes of the books that I'm reading um, in my wrap ups. And you've know maybe you've noticed, maybe you haven't, that I haven't been listing the tropes in this <laughs> uh, video so far. It's because of everything that I've gone through. I just didn't write any review, didn't do anything besides put a star reading. So I finally have some tropes I can talk about. <laughs> So this book has um, a capture captive trope, a caretaking scene. I love the caretaking scene in here because it like, it's the scene that's the pivot for the hero to be like, huh, this woman may be uh, different than what I assume she is because she's taking care of me when she did not need to. Loved that. Um, there's different social classes. Uh, he's a duke. It's a forbidden romance. Uh, she is a governess. There's a hidden identity, historical romance, marriage of convenience, and it is a married couple romance. So a bunch of fun tropes going on here. <laughs> I also gave this book a four to five stars. This wrap up is going to be kind of short <laughs> because all the rest of the books I'm going to talk about, the six books I have left, are all a part of the Interstellar Brides program by Grace Goodwin. Grace Goodwin is an alien romance author. I read a few of the books in this series, like two, three years ago, and I never continue on with the series. And my Libby has all of her books on audio and they're always either four to six hours long. And they're just fun books that are not amazing. Like they're not amazing. I have not given any of these books over four stars. I've only given one of these books four stars. All of them have been under, but they're entertaining. They're fun, even though they're very formulaic. It's basically the same kind of hero, same kind of heroine every single book. And like the situation's the same every time, but um, I have fun reading them, you know, whatever. I decided to read them in chronological order, not publication order, just because that works better with my brain. And so Grace Goodwin has a um, link on her website to a reading order for the books. So um, that's the way I'm reading them. And that's why I'm going to talk about them right now. I think if I read all these books in her series, because they're all like companion series, they all come together. Because um, there's like the Interstellar Brides program in different subcategories, you know, and I think I might make like a interstellar brides program or grace goodwin deep dive video whenever i get around to reading all these books because they're just so much fun they're hot they get you hot and bothered okay they get you in the mood they're fun <laughs> so first i read the aliens mate by grace goodwin um this is the first book in the interstellar brides program the sub series the virgins point 
book 0.5. So this one is very interesting because it's an alien romance, but it's also kind of like historical Western romance. So this book takes place like years before the Interstellar Bride program was a thing. So Maddox is the hero of this book. He is an alien and he ends up going to Earth to try and track down this evil guy he's trying to capture who murdered his sister. But then when he's on Earth, he ends up scenting his mate. Like he knows his mate is here. And so he's on the track to find this evil guy, but also find his mate who ends up being Cassie, who is a widow um, who lives in this Western time. When this guy comes and is like, hey, you're my mate. And he has these alien technolog technological devices. And she's not used to that at all. Cause like the 1800s or 1700s Western, like, she was like, what is going on? Uh, <laughs> so this one was fun to read. I gave this one um, three stars. It's not my favorite in the series or Grace Good one of Grace Goodwin's books. It's probably one of my least favorites just because I didn't believe the romance at all, like really, but it is what it is. I had a fun time. Then I read uh, book number six in the Interstellar Brides program because this is like the story about the first woman that was put into an interstellar bride program, which is called Mastered by Her Mates. I forgot to mention what the series even is. So the interstellar bride program, basically a thing that's going on on Earth right now where there's these evil aliens called the Hive. There's a bunch of different planets and uh, universes that are trying to destroy the Hive and the Hive is trying to now attack Earth. And to get protection, they end up forming this alliance with a bunch of other different alien coalitions. And the aliens are like, we'll protect you and help keep Earth safe if you send us brides. Uh, so, because we're down on women and we want women. So women can either volunteer to be a bride to an alien guy and be sent to the planet, or if you are a woman who is in jail, you can either choose two different options. You can stay in jail, or you can choose to be a bride, an alien bride. <laughs> So Amanda in here, she's actually a spy for the government. And um, they don't know how these aliens run. Like she's the first ever interstellar bride to be sent into space. And so she's been tasked by the government to basically tell them what's going on and report back to them, you know? Also, by the way, they end up matching you if you get sent to an alien planet and being like married to an alien. Um, they end up finding your perfect match. Like it's kind of like a, um, a perfect match match situation so they'll find your perfect alien and send you to them like that's like you are meant to spend the rest of your life together because you are a perfect match and so she gets a uh, match to a prillian warrior and she doesn't know that on this planet they actually have two mates and so she has two alien warriors caring for her and taking care of her you'll see if you read all these books like so far all of them are very formulaic and very the same where the woman gets sent to this alien planet and they end up finding their mate or whatever, and they're reluctant to do the customs that the mate wants. Some kind of like BDSM kind of stuff. And the woman's like, oh no, I'm not that kind of woman. I don't want that kind of stuff. And the hero's like, uh, it's the stuff that I want to do. So since you're my perfect match, you obviously want it too. It, it's, I don't know if it's consensual, not consent. I don't know how to like pigeonhole it or define it, but like it's not 100% consensual, but it's not sexual assault. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to like offend anybody, but I don't know how to describe these books at all. So I'm not going to, because I don't want to get the wrong term. They explore like physical, the physical side of their relationship and it develops into more. And that's always how all the books that I've read so far in the series have been. I give this one 3.5 stars and it has tropes of uh, three or more people in the couple, alien romance. It's a male order bride and there's a spy in here. My only issue right now with these books, I will say I'm not a fan of like MFM books where like the guys don't get together. I'm not really a fan of that. Like I'm not really a big fan of reverse hair. I'm like, I want everyone to kind of be together, but I feel like the way Grace Goodwin writes her MFM or sometimes MFMM books, because there's three guys in one of these books, like it doesn't bother me because they're, all together at once if that makes sense but the guys aren't together i wish the guys would get together we'll see if their other books are like that anyway off to the next one i reread assigned a mate which this one is only a relationship between one girl and one guy she's essentially a in the witness protection program this guy is out to murder her and the only way to save her is to send her to another planet she gets matched with the perfect person and um she has to like reveal to him that she's not there to stay even though she's fallen in love with him. This one is fun. It gives me a lot of nostalgia because I, I read this one years ago when um, Audible Escape was a thing. 
<laughs> um, so I did read a few of these books when they were on Audible Escape. I gave this book four stars. It's one of my favorites in the series compared to the other ones I've read. So um, I enjoyed this one. And then I also read book number two in the series. Uh, which is Made It to the Warriors, which is another Prill and Prime book. So like, if you can tell it by the covers, like the covers like change colors, like the text do. So the ones with like the same text and color are the ones that are sent to the same planet. So Made It to the Warriors is uh, another book sent to uh, Prill and Prime, which is the same book as um, Mastered by Her Mates. So again, she has two aliens trying to get with her or that are her mates. This is another three or more romance, alien romance, my little bride situation. Um, I gave this one three stars. This one was not my favorite. It's probably my least favorite so far, um, besides the uh, first book that I talked about, The Alien Bane. Then I read Claimed by Her Mates, which is my favorite so far, <laughs> because, okay, this is on a new planet, which I like this planet the most out of the ones we've read, where it's like kind of like more primitive and, because all the other ones we've read about, like, they have like a lot of technological advancements and they like live on space stations for like this one. It's like kind of like just more organic in the way that they live. And I, I love that, honestly. Um, and so this is the romance between one of women who just wants to find the love of her life. Like she wants to be loved and cherished. And so she's like, I'll sign up for the interstellar bread program because I want someone to love me. And she had no idea that she would be matched to three men, to identical triplets who are all um like like um inheritors of the throne of this planet and the issue is like there's three of them and so like there's three of them there could be three kings and so they're trying to find a woman to um have their baby and so they all are with her at once to try and have this one baby and have one heir this one's definitely my favorite it's the hottest it's the funnest <laughs> I love this one. It's not five stars just because there were some things in here that bothered me, whatever. Um, but it's just so just laughing, blushing. Love this one. It's my favorite. And then the last book that I ended up reading in February was uh, Taken by Her Mates, which is another Prill and Prime book. So you have two mates in here. Our woman in here has been mistakenly incarcerated. And so to avoid being in jail, she decides to be a alien bride and she goes to Prill and Prime. This one was a 3.5. It was okay. I've enjoyed other ones from the series more. Um, I definitely want to read more of these books. They're just super short, like something I can just escape to for a short time that does not make my brain work very hard, which is something I need right now. So I love being in the romance books and these are just <laughs> a breath of fresh air to me, even though they're very formulaic. In every single book the heroine has the same attitude of personality in every book and so does the heroes and like it is what it is but i'm having fun out of all these i just say you should read um claimed by her mates which is the three guys and one girl because it's it's fun it's super fun anyway there you have it those are all the books i ended up reading in February or the later half of February. If you want to know the other books that I read, go check out my mid-month wrap-up. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. I would love to know or if you want to chat with about any of these books with me. My DMs are always open on Instagram. Or if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a um what kind of emoji do we want? A sun emoji because the sun is out today. Um, but anyways, thank you all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!